welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon, and I am joined on this beautiful day, as I am on all days, with my by my best friend, Angelica. Angelica, how are you? I'm doing great, Shannon. I'm a little congested today, which is like the third episode in a row that I feel like I've been sick for. Um, but I'm happy to be here. How well, are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Um, yeah. It's nice. It's been a very nice, uh, nice week. Lovely California Uh, weather here. So, you know. Yeah, I feel like it's been truly a whirlwind of a week. It went by really quickly in like a blur of K-pop. Many different groups of K-pop for me. Yeah. We, y'all, this is, this, this podcast is getting intense. Like we're discovering things on our own and you, the listeners are sending us things and like, and we I, don't have, I don't have time. I don't have hours in the day for all this content that I need to be watching. But like, you seem to. Apparently the- I do. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know how I ended up um, having so much time on my hands or <laughs> I, I don't know, but <sighs> I've fallen down such a deep 17 hole. Yeah. I, I know all their names. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That's a real feat. I know all their names. I have a favorite. Yeah. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Uh, so, um, let's see. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Anything up top I want to mention. Um, thanks for listening to our bias episode last week. If you did listen to it, I, my, th- my guess is a lot of you probably tuned out about halfway through, which is fine. <laughs> but, uh, we fully blacked out from like fangirl feels. I don't remember saying anything that I said in that episode. I forgot to say a million things. Yeah. Like, I got dressed this morning and specifically put on my Mino necklace mm-hmm. and my Mino sweatshirt. They're both gorgeous. Because I felt really bad. <laughs> See, it's that loyalty, man. It that, gets you. That moment where you played John mm. singing, and I like ceased to be a human adult mm. for like a minute. Yeah, it was embarrassing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we were really, really flaily. I feel like there's a million things that we didn't say, but um, but I think that our the. P- the purity and enthusiasm of our love really was accurately it's apparent. communicated. So. so at least there's that. Um, and on that same note, I, d- I just wanted to like publicly apologize on the podcast that uh, I had never checked our Instagram DMs. I forget that they come in as like a request and they don't notify you. So like the day after we recorded our bias episode, I found like a million Instagram DMs where people had sent us biases. So like, I'm so sorry we left you out and that we yeah. missed your message, but I'm going to be on top of it now. Mm-hmm. We we'll never miss, miss another one again. <laughs> I promise. Okay. So, uh, uh, today we're gonna do something a little bit interesting. Like this, the today's topic was inspired by uh, these this rabbit holes that we week yeah. of K-pop, um, where two where two groups that we very much enjoy are currently promoting while we're recording this episode. So we're kind of stoked about them. So we thought let's do a whole episode about these kinds of groups. Um, and this, so today's episode is about K-pop subunits. Yes. Or sometimes subgroups, but mm-hmm. the terms are interchangeable. Sure. I think subunit is probably more often used. Yes, and a subunit is when a existing idol group takes, you know, two to five, six, seven, takes a small chunk of their members mm-hmm. and they break them out and give them like a new identity, a new name as the subgroup, and then they put out albums and promote and debut stage and do all that stuff mm-hmm. um, as if they were like a new group, but mm-hmm. they are still part of their original group. Yes. Oftentimes, too, the original group's name is like factored some way into the yes. subunit's name, which you'll see a lot of examples of that in that episode. But it's just sort of a fun way to like promote different members and to sort of um, – they get started for a lot of different reasons, which we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's just because the other members are busy doing other things. Right. Sometimes it's like, oh, well, this group has like 20 people in it, so let's choose a few to like highlight. Yeah. Um, But it's really – it's a fun part of K-pop. It's kind of one of those neat ways that, like, K-pop is sort of like a (laughs) never-ending thing. Like, K-pop just, like, builds upon itself in so many different ways um, that there's – as we were just saying earlier, like, there's always too much. Yeah. Like, there's always more to watch and never enough time. Yeah, and subunits definitely uh, add to that. Add to that. Uh, And just so you know, 
like what we are going to be talking about today are strictly subunits wherein all of the members are from the same original group. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of other like special projects where, you know, a group members of a group will team up with a solo artist or with or boy girls groups and girl groups will like get together and do a project. We can do yeah. another episode about that. There's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. But today this is just straight up subunits from the from same original groups. group. Yeah, because we've mentioned groups like Troublemaker before, yes. um, which has Hyanna, and actually there's two different versions of Troublemaker sort of, right? Because there's, oh no, I guess that Triple was a H different, is different. That's a different project. Yeah. But yeah, Hyanna like, will team up with like a bolt, like mm -hmm. she did one with a guy from Beast that was Troublemaker. And, and they then, released like two songs at least. Uh -huh. And then the, last year she did a thing with two boys and they were mm -hmm. called Triple H. So there's stuff like that, yeah. special projects. We'll do another episode about this that. This is subunits. All right, so let's just get into it. We're going to go through these in chronological order. Because mm -hmm. there weren't that many. There are not that many subunits. And there are a few that are left off this list, but I think we got, like, the majority of, of the bigger of hitters. The bigger hit yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll start at, we'll start back in 2006, and we'll end up with our currently promoting groups and get real excited. Okay. So, the first iteration of a subgroup that I could find, again, I could be wrong, there might have been one before this, but this was the one I could find, is uh, 2006 uh, Super Junior Cry, or K.R.Y. Um, this is a subgroup of Super Junior. Um, the members are Kyuhyun, Ryowook, and Yesung. Mm -hmm. K.R.Y. K.R.Y., yeah. Um, and they actually started by their first, like, quote unquote, single was from the soundtrack of a drama called Hyena, and the song was called The One I Love. So that was the first thing they did as this group of three was this drama soundtrack. Um, but the reason that I saw online that SM made this um, subunit was at the time Super Junior had 13 members, mm -hmm. and a, a handful of them were so much more popular than the rest of the group. Mm. Like, there were, like, four of them who just, like, stood out so much and were very, very popular. And SM was like, well, these three guys are, like, arguably our strongest singers, and we don't want them to get, like, forgotten in the shadows. So they, like, made this subunit to so that they could showcase... Their ballot, their like singing talent, mm -hmm. yeah, and just like sang instead of doing the like regular super junior thing. Yeah, I I noticed that when I was looking them up, they did mostly like soundtracks. Mm -hmm. They have two Japanese singles, but for the most part, like all of their songs are soundtrack songs, which means that they're like very yeah. like vocal heavy yeah, ballads, yeah, yeah. sort of like over the top, which is fun. Like that's fine. Um that's how some of the other subunits yeah. started as well. But I wanted to ask, so they came out in two thousand six. How when what year did Super Junior debut? Two thousand five. So it oh, was okay. just like so it was only a year after Yeah, it was a little bit after, oh, but okay. I guess the popularity of those four they, other maybe members they wanted to like even it so, out quickly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, we've got more people. Yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. thirteen is a lot to debut with. It is. Um yeah, I watched watched their Promise You video, which is one of their Japanese singles, and I kind of liked I kind of liked part of it. Um, I didn't love it overall. Like, they're beautiful singers, and the verses felt very, like, burn, usher, mm -hmm. burnish to me. Um, but then the, the chorus, like, went a little off the rails for me. Yeah. Um, a Super Junior Cry song that I enjoy or that I would like recommend is uh, actually from this, the I Am documentary that we talk about all the time. Um, but they do, there's like a, like a B side to the, to Super Junior song, Sorry, Sorry. And it's called Sorry, Sorry, The Answer. And it's like mm -hmm. a ballad. Like the chorus is kind of the same, but it's a completely different song. And it's like, oh. it's like the answer back to sorry, sorry or whatever. And so Super Junior Cry sings this at their Madison Square Garden concert and like, oh, they can, they're just, they just sit on stools in the front of the stage and just sang. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have to do anything because they can just like sing yeah, so they good. Have that's really all they have. I know. Yeah. That's what they do. So that was like the first subunit that I could find. Super mm -hmm. Junior Cry, like. Let's highlight our forgotten members. Um, and then next up in 2010 uh, was Orange Caramel. Uh, this is a subgroup of After School, mm -hmm. which is a girl girl group. Yes. Um, and the interesting thing about After School is they have they have a school concept, right? Which so allows members, them to 
graduate Great. members mm-hmm. instead of just instead of people just like leaving the group unceremoniously. They're like, she graduated, and here's the incoming freshman class of whatever. Mm-hmm. So uh, orange caramel was a third third generation or third class or whatever of yeah. after school. Uh, Reina, Nana, and Lizzie. And uh, Lizzie was very, very popular at the time. She was on, like, a lot of TV shows. Um, And Nana is, like, crazy beautiful. So, like, I don't know. I feel like they were picked (laughs) on purpose, like, these three to do this thing. Um, Their first single was called Magic Girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have – I love – Orange Caramel. Mm-hmm. Um, we've mentioned them, I think, at least once before. They're definitely one of my favorite subunits, but I, I have a soft spot for subunits in general. Yeah. <laughs> um, they have what's called a candy culture concept, which means oh. that, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the That's official their concept. Okay. Candy culture. So that factors into pretty much every aspect of themselves as a group from the sound of the music itself is very, like, uh, it is bubblegummy, but it's also very comedic. Like, they kind of have, com- like, a silly voice when yeah. they sing. It's very cutesy. There's also kind of a very, like, intense, I don't I don't know my music terms, but, like, that, like, driving club beat mm-hmm. in everything. Like, no matter how cutesy the song is, it has one of those, like, it, I guess if you were, like, a DJ or a club person, you could probably, like, easily mix, an or- like, an Orange Caramel song yeah. into, like, a club atmosphere mm-hmm. because they all have that, like, very intense, like, techno kind of beat Yeah. Behind. Them. And all of their costuming in their music video is super brightly colored, and they almost always look like pieces of candy themselves. Like their dresses look like cupcakes, or they look like like little you know candies and wrappers or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They have like bows in their hair and all kinds of crazy things. There's um, definitely like a costume mm-hmm. element of their like not just that like here's their cute outfit and this is the cost. Like they're right. wearing matching dresses with like an obscenely poofy skirt like right. there's no they're yeah. like literally dressed like cupcakes yeah like yeah mm-hmm. um i love them i think they're so <laughs> cute and funny and i watched um <laughs> ended up watching every single <laughs> one of their music videos last night <laughs> as i was preparing for this um but i am going to uh oh I actually just noticed that I wrote this down, that driving beat that you were talking about. I wrote in the side of my notes, 80s aerobics beat. Yeah. That's what like, it is. It's like it's you just... can keep the, like, step, <laughs> and it makes me think of, like, women in leotard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in front of a mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to recommend uh, three of their music videos, which are actually all by DigiPetty, which, oh, um, which we talked about last week, or two weeks, two weeks ago. ago. Um the first one is Catalina. Um, that's their number one, like, most popular yeah. song for sure. Um, and that one, we should have included that one on our music video I know. episode. Like, I thought about that. I think I thought about it when we were making the lists and mm-hmm. then was like, I don't know enough about Orange Caramel. But now, but I, now do. I do. <laughs> um, so I highly recommend Catalina. They start out as mermaids and then they become sushi. <laughs> and then while they're waiting for someone to buy them, the sushi, like, goes bad. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then- I also read today that I thought was so interesting is that like the, um, Catal- Catalina, um, samples a Punjabi wedding song. Yes. So it's got like a Bollywood kind mm-hmm. of. It totally has thing a Bollywood to beat to it. And, uh, they, like eventually go, the music video takes them like to a sushi restaurant, like one of those like conveyor belt yeah. sushis. And there's this really long sequence of like close ups of their mouths because they're, they're cutesy and like colorful and fun. But these are also like at this point in time, adult women. And mm-hmm. so the actual lyrics of the songs of all of their songs are very sexy. Um, and so there's this very long extended part of them just like sexily eating sushi, which is probably the least sexy oh, thing yeah. that you can eat. Eat. It's gross. <laughs> and it's so funny. It's so good. Um, that video is great. I also really loved the video Lipstick, mm-hmm. um, which has them like falling in love with their ping pong teacher. Super funny. Second biggest single of theirs for sure. Mm-hmm. And they have, they're wearing like, they have like, uh, silly colored eyebrows. Their eyebrows are like pink and purple mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, and then my favorite one though was called My Copycat, which was one I hadn't heard of before. Um, it follows the DigiPetty like formula of being in multicolored rooms. rooms. <laughs> but what's really cool about this one is that the theme for the video is Where's Waldo and uh, Spot the Difference, those like Spot the Difference pictures. Mm-hmm. So every single scene has like two uh 
images of the girls like in the same room but one thing is different in on each side of the screen and so mm-hmm. you have to like as you're watching it like spot the difference and oh. then th- toward the end of the video they start like showing you like scenes of more and more people and you have to like find the girls in the scene it's really fun and the the song itself is that like sounds a so jam. fun i loved it yeah loved there's it. lots of orange caramel out there they put out two full albums nine korean singles and two japanese singles so like there's orange caramel out there yeah. and they are technically still a group not mm-hmm. disbanded so maybe we'll see more from them in the future yeah they're i mean their music is fun so i do recommend listening to it but i also mostly recommend watching their videos because they're funny it gets the cult- the concept of Cross and Nana is so she's so stupidly beautiful. beautiful. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's unreal. Awesome. So uh, Orange Caramel, <laughs> uh, another group from 2010, uh, arguably probably one of the biggest subgroups ever. Uh, GD and Top. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is G Dragon and Top from Big Bang. It is Top, not T O. I'm almost positive it's Top. Okay. But, VIPs, please correct us. Yeah, please do if I'm wrong. I feel like top is correct. But anyway, um, so this is, uh, if you're not familiar with Big Bang, um, G-Dragon is like kind of, I feel like arguably like the face of, of yeah, Big Bang. Yeah, he's definitely the most famous for sure. Yeah, and then Top has like a very unique, very deep voice, mm-hmm. and he like sort of does more rapping. Yeah, we mentioned him last week um, because he has that like raspy sounding mm-hmm. voice. Uh, so what they actually did was they released their first album on Christmas Day, oh. um, and it was instantly a number one hit. And they put out three music videos like right at once. Mm-hmm. Uh, the three v- music videos were called High High, Knockout, and Baby Goodnight. Um, and like they immediately just like <laughs> yeah. shot to number one because they are very popular. Those three songs were in the top five on the gown chart. Um, that album was one of the year's best sellers. And two of those videos, Knockout and Hi Hi, uh, in 2012, Stereo Gum named them two of the best K pop music videos of all time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there are a lot of GD and Top music videos. Like mm-hmm. they made a lot of videos for their stuff. Um, so they only really did that one big comeback in 2010, like where they released like five or six singles off of the album. Um, and then in 2015, they did a song called Zutter and mm-hmm. it was just a single. And the music video is like 80% them standing at a urinal. It is it's very upsetting. The amount <laughs> of, okay. So I, in preparation for this, like went through this list and watched like one or two of their v- videos for each group and like wrote reactions and I have like pretty long reactions for Knockout and Hi Hi <laughs> and then when it came came to Zutter and I, I literally just wrote WTF period <laughs> and that was it because it starts with them going to your ur- urinal, urinal then it turns into like a slapstick Quentin Tarantino movie mm-hmm. and then it ends with at, at a certain point in the slapstick Tarantino movie GD is like taking a shit yeah. in a like horrible dirty 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 bathroom. graffiti bathroom and then at the end there it's like back to the urinal from the beginning and they're like peeing everywhere <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very strange. (laughs) It's so crazy. Um, But also, Top is so hot. Yeah. (laughs) He's so hot. Yeah, that that part is the confusing part. Mm -hmm. Um, I had never watched Knockout or High High. I knew the song High High because our dance teacher plays it during warm-up sometimes. But the Knockout video, um, I liked it. It was really funny and good. <laughs> At first, I was like, why is there a Playboy theme? Like, what is this? What's happening? Um, but then it kind of gets, like, goofy and tongue-in-cheek. And, like, mm-hmm. that, was, that was good. Yeah. Uh, and I never really saw the appeal of G-Dragon. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I just watch um, yourself, Not girl. because <laughs> – not in the sense that, like, I thought he was, like, a – I didn't like him as a person, but in the, like, I was not attracted to him. Mm-hmm. Um, he seems very, like, slight and feminine he's to me. very pretty. Like, but, yeah. like, pretty. Yeah, he's very pretty. Um, but as you guys already, I have a very specific type when yeah. it comes to idols. And it's more, like, top yeah. um, than G-Dragon. And then in the knockout video, the, he's, like, sitting on a couch and this girl, like, lays in his lap. And I was like, oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. I get it. <laughs> uh, stay tuned for more GD and Top at the end of the episode. I have a rec that I'm going to make, my oh, okay. episode rec. So, um, Next, we're going to 2011, and we have Sistar19. 
Um, and this is the origin group is obviously Sistar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and this is the members Hyolin and Bora. Mm-hmm. And Hyolin is the like lead singer of Sistar and has like a very successful like solo career because girl can sing. Mm-hmm. And Bora is the rapper of yeah. Sistar. If you're not familiar enough with Sistar to like know their faces or their names, but you've seen uh, Touch My Body, uh, Hyolin is the one that has the crazy tattoo on she her She has stomach. a tattoo on her stomach, and she's usually like much, Super much tanner tan. than everyone mm-hmm. else, so you can see her you can very spot easily. Her quickly. And Bora's the smallest one, so yeah. like that helps too. <laughs> um, so their first single is called My Boy, and it's just like a very like... Just like kind of slow, like R and B song. It, there's not, it's not that special, honestly. And I only knew it was a song because uh, a show I've brought up on this pot program before, uh, Unis Slam Dunk, where like the comedians and actresses and whatever are all trying to be an idol group. One of the first things they do before, like you know, learning the single that they go on to promote is they all have to learn the dance to my boy. Mm. Like, because it's kind of slow and kind of simple and just kind of body it's rolling. It's literally all body rolls. So that that's what they had to do to kind of, like, loosen them up and get them used to learning choreography. So, like, that was my only knowledge of my boy is mm. that it came up in that show as, like, an easy dance for someone to learn. Interesting. I had never heard it before. I did watch the video and was not impressed. Um, I found the song kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a scene where Hyolin is wearing socks with super high stripper heels in the kitchen while having a fight with with her boyfriend. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just like, why? She also wears high socks and heels in the Touch My Body video. That must be, like, a thing. Yeah, it's it's, I didn't like it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they did that in 2011, and then in 2013, uh, they did another little comeback, and the song was called Gone Not Around Any Longer, and it's also kind of slow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, My Boy is like a breakup song. Yeah. So um, I, I'm assuming Gone is not as ar- well. it, Yeah, it seems that Since way. it's called Gone Not, not around, around Anymore. Any longer. Yeah. <laughs> any longer. Uh, yeah, so that was his star 19. Um I unfortunately don't have a ton to say because I feel like Sistar as a group is so much, like, so much better than yeah. this, like, little project was. Well, and this project doesn't exist. In, they right. disbanded when, when Sistar, Sistar disbanded, disbanded they, so. so. They are no more. The, they are no more. Uh, all right. So that was, like, 2011. Uh, 2012, this is a big one, another big yeah. one. Uh, TTS or TTSO. It's actually Te Tiso. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Wow. Te Tiso. Te Tiso. I am so stupid. It's okay. I I only knew that. Uh, I only learned that yesterday. Okay. But it is Te so, Tiso. Te Tiso. Uh, this is the, <laughs> the origin group is uh, Girls' Generation. Um, and the members are Tiffany, Taeyeon, and Soyeon, mm-hmm. who all have put out like past this have all put out solo albums that are like some of my favorite they're solo so albums good. ever they're, they're so, so good, good. so Hyun's ep- album I listen to like almost once a week yeah that was like one of my faves of 2017 yeah. like by so far good. so good anyway so at this time in 2012 um, a lot of the other members of Girls Generation had started their like acting careers and mm-hmm. were like very very busy um, and Tiffany Taeyeon and Soyeon were um, hosting Music Bank Sh- Music or Core Music Core Show yes, music yes Show core. Music Core <laughs> Uh, so they were hosting that show at the time, like all mm-hmm. three of them, and were just like, "Hey, we like singing, like, and everyone else is busy. Yeah, we should be a group." <laughs> uh, so they became a group, and their first single uh, is called "Twinkle." It's so good. I love that song. It, it's like jazzy. It, ha- it has um, that like theatrical element to SM that we both love. Mm-hmm. And if you watch the music video, you can see Tiny Baby XO. Uh huh. Not all of them, but, but a first, couple. <laughs> first is Chanyeol because they. So the concept is like. The, uh, Te Tiso, like, our idols. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of has, like, a um, uh, Britney Spears lucky, like, oh, costuming to lucky. it. But yeah, it's not that. Like, it's, like, a fun, and, it's yeah, a fun yeah, yeah. song. And so they, like, get out onto the red carpet out of a limousine, and Chanyeol is, like, one of the photographers, like, trying to take pictures of them. And then uh, they're, like, going onto stage or something, and they pass uh, Beckyuns in the hair salon mm-hmm. with them. And, uh, Isn't, like, Lou Hannah? Or- no, Kai and Sehun walk oh, okay. by them in the hallway. Um, but they're, they're really soulful. They have, like, soulful voices, yeah, and they're yeah, all... Yeah. 
yeah. like belting the shit out of this song and it's it's a great song it's great and twinkle was the first album by a korean artist to rank number one on the billboard world albums chart wow um and they were also the first subgroup to ever achieve a triple crown on music shows they <gasps> won number one for three weeks in a row um, Good job, ladies. So, yeah, this was, like, a big deal as far mm -hmm. as subgroups go. They sold so many albums, and they, like, you know, did really well. Yeah. Um, the first time that a subunit, I would say, is was, like, close to the same popularity as their actual original group. Or, like, selling, I, like, getting to number one. I mean, and GD like and Top did, did pretty similar. I think oh, yeah, it's, like, true. when you start <laughs> with a group that already is, is incredibly so popular. popular that mm -hmm. you're, like... You know, you're starting off on a good foot, but all three of these ladies are very, very talented. And so mm -hmm. I get it. Um, and then was it like what, one or two years later when they did Holler? Um, 2014. Mm, so two years later. Two years later, they came out with another single called Holler. Um, I remember when that song came out and I wanted to like it so badly, but it's like, it's not eh, as good as it's Twinkle. It's not as good as Twinkle. Um, and so, and then after that, they did. Uh, Christmas, a Christmas album mm. called Dear Santa. So they had three EPs all together. Um, Tiffany and Soyeon have left Girls' Generation. They did not renew their contracts um, at the end of 2017. So they, that will probably never happen again. But you never know because when the when the other girls left, they like insisted that like it wasn't a disbandment of Girls' Generation. Like that Girls' Generation wasn't done. Mm. So I don't know. <laughs> again, when we can get to our fun courtroom episodes, like you know. They could very well like sue to keep the you know to keep the yeah, name keep or the name. whatever. Who knows? Anyway, so that was Tati So. Tati So, yes, got it right way. Okay, so next we're getting into 2013, which was like a very popular year for subgroups. It seems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, four I have four different groups came out in that year. Yeah, so let's start with uh, Infinite H. Uh, origin group is Infinite, which is a boy group. Mm -hmm. In case we haven't brought them up before, we, we have. might. We have okay. Uh, so the members were Hoya and Dongwu, and their first single they did like two singles: "Special Girl" featuring Bum Key and "Without mm -hmm. You" featuring Zion T. We've brought up Zion T a bunch of times, but Bum oh, Key I didn't also. Watch Without You. Oh, really? I watched Pretty. Ah, that was later. Oh, that's what that's their most viewed. Yeah, that's that was the most it. popular one. Yeah, so their first two were act, like featured other people, yeah. which I kind I of watched, seems weird. That is kind of strange. I did watch the the special girl, but I didn't watch the Zion T one. I'll have to watch that one later because I love him. Yeah, so that's interesting. Bumkey also guests on a lot of. He's like a solo singer rapper guy, and he uh, is on a lot of people's. Tracks. And we'll bring him up when we do our inter-unit Yeah, uh, Yeah, definitely. Um, so Infinite H, uh, they actually, this group came to be when the two of them did like a special stage during an Infinite concert. Um, and they did that first and it was like, oh, they work together well. Like maybe we should try to debut them. Mm -hmm. um, so they put out two mini albums total. Um, this group is no longer because Hoya left Infinite last year. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, I don't know that much about Infinite. Um, I just know, like, some of their faces, and I think I've heard a few of their songs. But mm -hmm. So I'm not really familiar with their, like, concept or style. Um, so I was a little surprised watching the Infinite H because they're so, um, like, colorful and loud and, like, again, sort of yeah. comedic. Like, they have sort of a, um, a like, over-the-top personality yeah. to them in their music um which i found really fun and cute i really liked both pretty and special girl yeah pretty is a really fun music video it's like it's def like i feel like if i had seen it before i might have brought it up on our music video yeah, episode totally. i would have it has um it's like the two members are in a um like a courtroom because this pretty girl has like caused them to get into like a car accident knocks stuff like, like knock minor incidents yeah, like, causes them to be clumsy and silly and, and so they act it all out and it's mm -hmm. very cute and there's like cartoon like uh blot like bubble letters like captions yeah, yeah, that yeah. pop up throughout it so it's really cute. That was a cute one. Um okay, we got to speed through 2013. There's so many groups. Okay. Uh so next is Tiara and 4, mm -hmm. which was a subunit of Tiara with members Unjung, 
Hyomin, Jiyeon, and Adam. Adam became a former member. She left like pretty much four, immediately almost after this. Almost immediately after they started, yeah. Uh, so the other three continued without her. Yes. Uh, so their first single was called Chonwon Ilgi or Chonwon Diary, which is the name of an 80s uh, drama, like a mm. Korean drama. And apparently the lyrics of the song and the music video is like referencing this drama. Oh, okay. All right. Um, that's the only single they ever put out, though. Yeah, they, it had like an EM, EDM beat to it. It was mostly like fast talk singing as yeah. opposed to like actually singing a song. Um, I, di- I didn't love it. I didn't either. But the more and more, I keep learning more and more about TR, and I really do feel like we should do a whole episode because there's so, so, so much there. It's they very seem to have a lot of a lot of complications. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, more 2013. Next is Tuyun, which was a group, uh, formed from Four Minute, mm-hmm. which is a girl group. Which is where Hyanna came yes. from. Yes. And this was members Gayun and Jiyun. Um, and they performed together at United Cube, which I'm guessing is like Cube's SM Town mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and the CEO. Like family concert. Yeah. And the CEO of Cube was like, I love them. We're making them a subunit. Um, so they did this song called 24 7, which is honestly the most unique K-pop song I've ever heard. I loved the song. The song was so cute, and it has, like, a country western theme to it. Like, the music video has them on it, like, a country western set. And Would you mind if I played just, like, a tiny bit of it just because I, like, kind of can't believe that this is a thing? Hold on. Here we go. I think it sounds like something out of High School Musical. Yes, it does. Like, or yeah, something else like that, where it's like it's trying to be a country country song, but mm-hmm. not being a country song at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the way that like Bop to the Top is supposed, supposed to be, be Latin. Like a, yeah, or salsa. <laughs> yes, it's just like that. <laughs> yeah. But because it was so interesting, it like got them a lot of attention, and Tuyun became the first Korean girl group to be interviewed by Time Magazine because what? of this song. Um, and they cited weird. that they listened to Carrie Underwood and Taylor Swift and like used it as the inspiration. So like that people Love were it. writing about it because they were making weird K-pop weird country K-pop music. Country, yeah. Um, this is all they did though. A crossover I never thought would, it, would yeah. exist. Um, yeah, but that's the only song they ever did. So, but interesting. And now four minute has been has four minute is gone. So. Yes. Um, last 2013 group is AOA Black. Mm-hmm. I loved this one. Yeah. This was really fun. This is a subunit of AOA girl group. Um, and the interesting part about this is they played their instruments. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the members were Jimin on guitar, Yuna on keyboards, Mina on bass, Yoo Kyung on drums, and Choa was the lead singer slash gu- other guitarist. Mm-hmm. Um, and their first single was called Moya. Yeah. Which is a super like bouncy song but it's like a um like your boyfriend's cheating on you yeah. kind of kind of tune um I loved it. I really liked that song. Yeah, it was really good and really interesting um and it's like a bummer that it didn't work out because shortly after this Yu Kyung left left AOA her contract ran out and they were like well she can keep being an AOA black um but AOA black never had another comeback because mm-hmm. Choa left the group. Uh, so that was that was that which is a bummer, so but it's always fun to see people doing something interesting, especially yeah. like playing instruments. Mm-hmm. So that's a good one. Um, let's see. Next, next, next. Uh, 2015, Vix LR. Uh, Vix is a boy group, a kind of beastie boy group. Yeah, for sure. Um, and this is a little... Beastie and like angsty. Yes. Angsty beast. Yes. <laughs> um, so like, the... like a beauty in the beast. Yes. A true beast. True. Uh, so this was members Leo and Ravi. They're like the lead singer and the lead rapper, respectively. Mm-hmm. Um, their first single was called Beautiful Liar, and it like did okay, and people were excited about it. Um, but their second EP, Whisper, in 2017, went to number one. So like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I 
watched Beautiful Liar. Um, so angsty. Yeah, it's really emo. <laughs> it's like, really so, emo. It's, like, ridiculous. The fake tattoos in that video are disgusting. <laughs> um, there's, like, a pain-splattered piano. There's so much of the members fighting each other. Yeah. Like, at a certain point, there's, like, three different sets in which they are fighting. In one of them, like... One of them, Leo's winning, and the other one, Robbie's winning. And then suddenly they're shirtless beach fighting. And you're like, why are we – what? what is happening yeah. in this – why are we fighting everywhere? And when did you take your tops off? Yeah, I was very disappointed that the that the uh, the thumbnail on YouTube for Whisper is like very homoerotic, and the video wasn't. I no, was like, they're hey, like not even in the same room cool. together for most of it. <laughs> but it's like revealed at the end that they're like tied together with a string, yeah. or something. They can't get away from each other. Mm -mm. I don't know. I'm not sure. I honestly didn't finish. The Whisper video. <laughs> I okay. started it. I watched it after Beautiful Liar, and I had like rolled my eyes so much in Beautiful Liar that I think my eyes were tired and yeah. I had to stop. So. <laughs> well, this is a so that's so a thing. <laughs> Vix LR is the thing. Vix is like currently promoting right now. I think. Oh, so, are like, they? I don't know anything about Vix. A girl that I follow on Tumblr has like fallen fallen for very hard. <laughs> so I've been like s absorbing from the side like yeah. some Vix stuff. That's always fun when that happens. <laughs> Um, next up, 2016, another AOA subgroup. This is AOA Cream. I uh, loved this yes. music video. I loved it so much. Like, it's not usually the style of K-pop that I would enjoy, but I wrote, and my, their song is called Baby, I'm Jelly Baby. Mm -hmm. And it's like another sort of like cheating boyfriend kind of song, but they're like magical Barbie queens. Yeah. In this and they're like witch, video. they're like witchies putting like spells on this mean cheating yes, boy. And he had, they go, each one of them gets like, it starts out normal or whatever. And one of them, I, I don't know which one is which, but one of them that has like the beautiful pink ombre colored hair um, in this music video. She like discovers that maybe the guy she likes is like flirting with other people. And so the each member goes through uh, like a Powerpuff Girl transformation mm -hmm. where they like ding, like change in and they like get a crown and they get a scepter and then they like get a fairy dress. Mm -hmm. and it's so cute. So the members of AOA Cream are Yuna, Hyejung, and Chunmi. Um, and which, what's kind of interesting, I just also noted this down and I, I assume it's just for fairness, but so we brought up AOA Black and this is AOA Cream. There is also a group called AOA White, which is not, they're, they just call them a non-promotional subunit. So they don't make music and they've never done anything. I think it's just to make the girls who've been left out of a subunit. So like included. all the rest who haven't been like, you're this subunit. You're you just AOA haven't done White. anything yet. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. We'll so that's get kind of you. interesting. Um, so yeah, I like this AOA cream. I'm jelly baby song. It's really fun, but it only, it, it peaked at 25. So mm -hmm. it was, it, it was not well. a hit, but. And that's fun. the only thing they ever did, right? So far. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Think none of the people in AOA Cream have left AOA, so you know so, oh, there's so a potential. There's they a potential future. Um, all right, I think it's time for Angelica's dancing. It's time for you to talk about your favorite boys in the whole world. Uh, 2016 EXO CBX or EXO Chen Bek Shi debuted. This is Chen Baekhyun and Shuman from EXO, and Angelica's still dancing. CBX mm -hmm. Chen Bek Shi. So their first single was Hey Mama, which we talked about in our hey music Mama. video episode. <laughs> and um, actually, before, I'm just going to, one more piece of business and then I'll let you talk. Uh, some notes. Their first thing was actually another, another this is another drama so soundtrack project. They for did a you. song called For You for so Moon Lovers, the drama Moon Lovers. Um, and when they did this, fans started speculating like, oh, are they going to be a subunit? And they were. So, Angelica, you love them. Take it away. <laughs> uh, this has been such a magical week because, I mean, I've mentioned Hey Mama before. I love CBX. Of course, Jongdae Chen, the C in this, is my uh, exo bias. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, and Shuman, Min, Kim Min Sok, he's the ex in this Chen Bek Shi. Um, he and Jongdae are from XOM, mm -hmm. which was my favorite. Yes. And so, like, having them together is just like, 
And just Feeds just for fam- <laughs> just for context, in case somebody's listening to this a year from now, as we are recording this, uh, CBX recently just put out their second album. It's called Blooming Days, and it's perfect. It is w- literally the only thing I've been listening to this entire week. Mm-hmm. My only complaint about it is that it's too short. But it has a song for short. every day of the week. Oh no, I know. Like, but that's there's only seven days. But wasn't of the, week, the Hey Mama thing like only more. three songs? It was, uh, four to five. Okay. Um, but I just want like a. I want. You want more? I want more. <laughs> I want more. Um, I want to see. <laughs> want to see them dancing. Um, I do want to see them dancing. I love their dancing, and it, it's so great. Um, I just, okay, hold on. I have to, like, organize my thoughts. Let's get some business out of the way before I fangirl. Um, they started with Hey Mama, uh-huh. and they did, that has, like, a. we've talked about that uh, music video and the album before. It has sort of, like, a retro, like, disco feel to They've their always songs. had, like, a bit of a, yeah. like, vintage like, Funky mm-hmm. disco kind of fun. And one of the things that actually started them off aside, so before they did For You, actually, mm-hmm. the three of them appeared in a, uh, they call them VCRs for oh, yeah. um, their concerts, which is basically just like a recorded like mini film. Like, that it's they like, play while people are yeah, changing while clothes. while people are changing costumes during the concert, like they play this thing. And so uh, that became the, it was had a different name at the time. I don't remember. It was something about like warriors or I don't know. Okay. It was like something goofy. Um, anyway, that clip became the music video for the one. It's the one where they're like dressed goofily and like poor Suho is like the janitor. Oh in it. yeah, 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 um, yeah. So that later became the music video for the one. Um, but so that originally debuted during one of their concerts. Then they did the soundtrack for. Uh, or the song for you, which is truly beautiful. There's a live version of it at Inky Gayo that they di- did in 2016. It's bu- it's gorgeous. Like Chen and Beck are like two of the lead and also best singers uh, yeah. of EXO. And Schumann actually does have a really beautiful voice, but he doesn't get featured very often. He's like not one of the most featured. Members. He was in the rap line of XOM, which is yeah. like a waste of mm-hmm. him. Exactly. So like because he was originally in XOM, he was originally part of the rap line, like Shannon just said. And so when XOM like disbanded, essentially, or like became absorbed, became uh, be- when XOM XOK like became just EXO like they are now Schumann I think like became not very featured and he's a fantastic dancer he dances so hard he is like such a strong stage presence and he has a really pretty like soft voice Mm -hmm. um, which I love Um, I wrote that his soft voice makes me soft (laughs) Um, but I do love rapper Min too like he's really he's adorable I love him Um, but so anyway so they did uh, then they did a uh, Japanese album after Hey Mama they came out with a Japanese album called Kaching Mm -hmm. which I didn't love immediately but I love it now Kaching 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 I love it Um, I I truly do love it now it's really really fun Um, and I ended up watching like one of their sort of like mini concerts that they did in Japan where they performed Kaching and they did Hey Mama and they did Cherish which I'd never seen them do live Um, that's one of their songs from Hey Mama and then they also did my favorite song from the Kaching album which is called Girl Problems it's so cute. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I had a really fun time yesterday watching all of these videos um, just to, like, cap off my my yeah. entire week they're, filled with CVX. They're very, very good. Um, there's, like, a little, like, meme that I've seen go around that's, like, that, you know, the text on it says, like, CVX eats CDs for breakfast um, because there's this here's, – here's a fun K-pop concept for you there are these videos you can find on youtube that you just type in the song of the artist you're looking for and then you write mr removed Mm -hmm. Um, and this is like a whole channel that will take live performances and erase any backing track so that you hear exactly what they sound Mm -hmm. like just the live feed from the microphone i will warn you if you have any inklings that your favorite group might be not talented don't watch these they will ruin ruin you it'll ruin them it will really ruin it but if but cbx ones are un un believable because they're dancing because 
They Part of so what good. makes CBX so great is their choreography. Like they, because Chen Beck and Schumann, like neither, not none of them are the main are part of the dance. Because Kai and Lei are such good dancers that I feel like it takes it takes it away from anybody mm-hmm. else in EXO ever like shining as a dancer because they yeah. are such strong dancers. You kind of can't look away, right? But the choreography for CBX is complex and it's also very like cutesy and a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, but they are. Phenomenal dancers. Mm-hmm. Like, they truly are very good. Um, and so they're dancing super hard, but their voices don't even waver. Like, yeah. they sound so they're much like the, like the recording. It's almost magical. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. I love them so much. And so this, as of our recording this, they just came, like, today is Sunday. And so the, the concept of their newest album, which is called Blooming Days, um, is like the days of the week, right? Mm-hmm. So there's only seven songs on it. One for, it starts on Monday and it goes all the way to Sunday. And so in promoting this album, of course, they first had like the full week of like tiny cl- teasers, teasers and like images. You and, brought that up in previous episodes exactly. when the teasers were driving me you nuts. nuts. <laughs> um, driving me nuts. Uh, and then because they, Cave, because that's the concept of their album, they have done for every day this week a different like variety show to like mm-hmm. promote it. And it's been so cute. Yeah. They're very cute. They're very good. Check out CBX. We yeah. stand behind them. And they're, and if you're listening to this episode when it comes out, they're like currently promoting or meh, maybe they just stopped, but it's all recent. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Okay. We have one last group to talk about. Very, very recent in that, like just a couple of weeks ago, as of again, as of this recording mm-hmm. in, in April ish, 2018. Um, this is a group called BSS or Busoksun. Busoksun, they're from Seventeen. Seventeen. And actually, as of this recording, they have not officially debuted Oh, really? Yet. They haven't they done any They released stages. one song on March 21st. It's the only song as of now that they've released. It's called Just Do It. But their official debut is set for May 30th. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, looking forward to that for sure. Yeah. So the members of this uh, of this little subunit are DK, uh, Hoshi, who we've brought up before as being the dance leader of, is mm-hmm. that right, Perform- Performance team leader. The performance team. And Song Kwan. Yes. Um, and they're called BSS because their uh, given Korean names have Lee Sok Min is DK, uh, Bu Song Kwan is Song Kwan, and then Kwon Soon Young is Hoshi. Okay. Um, so it's from their original names. Um, and they're fantastic. Um, their song, the one that they've released so far, Just Do It, it has like a, the music video that they made. It's called a special clip. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess since they haven't done their, their official Because it's not a debut. real MV. Yeah. Um, but it has like a roller rink. They're in a roller rink and it has like 90s hip they're wearing like windbreakers and stuff windbreakers and the like LL Cool J like Puma hat you know what I mean yeah 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 Um, but the the dancing is so great they it looks truly exhausting Um, yeah I watched the video yesterday and fell madly in love with one of the members like immediately yeah so did I I fell in love with him uh, when I was watching One Fine Day because I had when I confessed on this episode or on this show that I was on the cusp of like becoming a carrot, uh-huh. some sweet listener tweeted at us and recommended that I watch One Fine Day and that I learn them by unit. So I did. Yeah. And <laughs> that's very sweet. So my carritude is official now. Congratulations. I can name them in any performance. I have tested myself. The only ones I sometimes get confused are Mingyu and Wanwu. I know their faces. I just miscorrectly memorized Wanwu's name. And so I have, I will like need to fix that for myself. Um, but DK. Yeah. That's the one that I fell in love with. I got his name wrong at first. Yeah. And I texted her and I was like, I think I'm in love with a 17. Mm-hmm. Is it this one with the question mark? And I was wrong. Yeah. I <laughs> screenshotted that conversation and will be posting it on Great. our Instagram. Thank you. <laughs> it's very So funny. everyone can see it. Um, but he's so, he's so tall and he's so pretty and he has like a weird face. Like, he yeah. has a very long, pointy nose. Um, but he's but got he's, that squared, like, I feel like 
I feel like if you put all of the boys that we love the most, like on a big poster, there's like a jaw shape that I think mm -hmm. is can be applied to most of them. Like I think we like a square, like manly jaw. Yeah. Like where we were talking about G, G Dragon before, he has like a perfect pointy, a very, yeah. like a mm -hmm. very perfect, like pointy, pretty, delicate face, which like most of NCT has that face. Yes. And I feel like we we like we like a a, a stronger jaw. A stronger jaw on, yeah. our, on our dudes. On our fellas. And, uh, oh, DK, he's just so, he just, I, I was, as I said, I was watching One Fine Day and, like, before the end of the first episode, I had already texted Janet. I think I yeah. was, like, 15 minutes into that hour and a half long episode, which took me two days to watch <laughs> because I would pause, pause it, it and, and research and take notes and compare pictures and like of the screenshot that I'd paused it, like name them all mm. and then check myself and That's then keep really going. really diligent homework. Good I job. Look at my color coded I, notes. Oh my God. That's <laughs> so cute. <gasps> that's so cute. You were like... I wrote like, eyebrows plus overbite, cleft yeah. chin, skinny one. <laughs> oh my god, I love it! And then they're incomplete because as I continue to watch One Fine Day, I You're write down like little things. things that they do that will help me oh, remember that's who they are. Super cute. Um, yeah, I really took my my um, induction into this fandom seriously because because they have so repeatedly impressed me mm -hmm. um, with their choreography and with their like energy, and I truly do really enjoy Seventeen songs. And I love Just Do It. It's really a fun song. The dancing is amazing. I watched like five different performances of theirs because they promote it like a normal, you know, like yeah. a normal group on all the music shows and everything. And <laughs> I was just sitting in my living room watching them. And by the end of the five videos, I was exhausted because the yeah. dance looks so really tiring. tiring. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, we are look we'll look forward to the official debut of Busok Soon. But like, yeah, check that one out. That's good. I'll definitely um, buy whatever they they put out. Yeah, I'll so buy it. that's I think that's pre-order. <laughs> I think that's it for our um, subgroups. I had one thing that I wanted to bring up because I can't tell if it counts or not, but it is interesting to me, um, and that is the JJ project. Are you aware of this? No. Okay, so in 2012, JYP debuted the J JJ Project, which is JB and uh, and Jin Young from uh, from GOT7, but GOT7 was not a thing yet. So they came oh. out as a duo, as JJ Project first, and then oh. they were debuted with the rest of GOT7, and GOT7 is a thing now, and their original like first single is called Bounce, like GOT7 now does Bounce in concert. Um with all seven of them, mm -hmm. not just with the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, the t but the two of them put out, like, a really gorgeous song last year. Like, it's one of those, like, put it on and, like, cry a little bit kind of, oh, like, so songs. so they do still make So they music. have done another thing as JJ Project since the debut of GOT7, but I just thought it was interesting. And, like, does it count that they were technic that they were the quote-unquote subunit first? Yeah, it's almost like GOT7 is a subunit. Yeah, of, right? Of JJ, of JJ Project, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess technically it does count, but you're right, it doesn't fit the title of subunit because then that implies that the larger unit came first. So I don't know what we would call that one, but let's include that in this episode yeah. because. So, yeah, what is the. It's the same yeah, thing they basically. came out with a song last year called Tomorrow Today, and it's just like one of those very, like, Maybe you would play it at like a graduation or something, but it's very like, oh, like which road am I going mm. to choose? Like, what is my life going to mean? It's like very serious. Um, but yeah, it's good. So, and, and it's funny because they, they are like my two current like favorites in God Seven. So I think it's funny that, Isn't that they've always fun been when together. Your favorites get into that's, I feel like that's why this week has been such a magical, joyous, Seven Time. days for yeah. me because my number one bias in EXO has like a phenomenal subunit that I love so much and their music is so good. Like I could mm -hmm. not have asked for a better album to come out this week. And then BSS had my newest bias. Yeah. And I was just like drowning. How blessed could you be? In beautiful book. <laughs> that's, that's how I want to yeah. die. Yeah. I, I literally wrote... <laughs> EXO, CBX, laying me into my grave so sweetly. <laughs> Beautiful. I think that's a perfect end to this. So uh, <laughs> check out some subunits, and we'll be right back with our random game.
Okay, we are back, and we're very, very excited because the first time ever we have the random picker picked a group that we know a ton about. Yay! We've been waiting for this day to happen. I was keeping my fingers crossed that we would get CBX today, but right. it's okay. It's okay, but we'd... X is involved. <laughs> X is involved. Uh, we got FX. Yay! We've mentioned them several times. A uh, girl group from SM debuted in 2009. Um, they came up a ton on our dating scandals episode mm-hmm. because, like, half of the things we talked about involved members of FX, which is so weird yeah. and hilarious. Uh-huh. Because of uh, Crystal, right? Yeah. Um, in Kaistel, my number one favorite. Uh, and Idol, like Changmin and Victoria yeah, came Chang-min up. Yeah, and Victoria and, and Sully, Sully and Keja, of Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, so that the members of FX, we have Victoria. She was, was she the leader? Yes. And she's from China. Mm-hmm. And um, then there was Amber, who's from America and is actually of Chinese descent, I'm pretty sure. She's oh, really? Not oh, Korean. I didn't know that. Um, and then Luna. Uh-huh. And Crystal and Sully. Yes. And Sully is no longer a member of FX. Right. She left after the dating after scandal the that we talked scandal. about. <laughs> she, the company claimed that she was leaving to focus on her acting. Um, Which she did. <laughs> she she did that. Okay. So, Good. Yeah, she had, yeah. remember she did that naked movie with that guy from, oh, right, right, from right, Another right, Star? Right. She showed her boobies to be like a real actress. Real actress. To try to be taken seriously. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, what else about FX? So they were intended to be like dance focused. Right. Mm-hmm. They were always kind of like futuristic. Uh, that's and- what I was just going to say. I feel like they were, their whole concept was way ahead of its time. Yeah. Um, because like we said, they debuted in uh, 2009 and they just had sort of, they just had a different sound than a lot of the other girl groups mm-hmm. at the time, which I very much enjoyed um, because they were, they weren't edgy in the sense that like, they're not like four minute, like tough and scary, but they're not fairy idols right. for sure like they're not going to be in a meadow um yeah. but they're not going to be in like an abandoned building either yeah they sort of and i feel like they always kind of um worked around like fx being very interesting and all of them being very different people mm-hmm. like sully was the baby and yep. sully was like a child actress so like she was known to the country as like being sweet so she was always styled like in kind of like cutesy girly dresses Mm -hmm. whereas like amber has always been very androgynous and she always wears pants and she's always had short hair and they like let they like work Amber's style and Sully's style like into the concept. Yeah, like, absolutely. They really did allow each girl to sort of like play up and feature her own personality through their through their yeah. costuming and style, which is always fun. Um, another fun, interesting thing about uh, FX is that they were the first K-pop group to perform at South by Southwest, which is a music festival that happens every year in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Um, I believe since the year they did that, which was like 2013, um, they now have a thing. It used to be called K-pop Night Out, and I think this year they changed what it's called. I don't mm. know what it's called. But at South by, they usually try to do like – a K-pop stage and like G Dragons come and Mama yeah. Moo and Card was there this year and mm-hmm. like so I guess FX started that whole thing which is super That's cool. That's so cool. Yeah, uh Shannon and I have mentioned briefly before that we both uh grew up in Texas. I'm from there. Shannon moved there when she was a kid. And um uh, so that's really fun that it's like a little connection to our hometown. Yeah. But I also remember when G Dragon was in town, I went to South by Southwest. Yeah. And I didn't see him while I was there, but, um, somebody, w- I was talking to somebody and, uh, it's always really funny, like, oh, K pop, like in the middle of Texas. Right. Because then you get people being like, oh, like G Dragon, I, uh, I hear, or they're like, I hear a very famous, uh, K- Korean star is coming to town. And you're like, oh, really? Like who? And they said, I think his name is, G Dragon, do you, do you know who that is? And then you just, as a K-pop fan, laugh because he's like arguably one of the, like most, the most famous, famous people. K-pop stars of all time. And you're like, Haha, yeah, I know yeah, who I've that heard is. of G Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with the name. <laughs> um, okay, so back to FX. They put out four full albums, um, three as five members, and then one after Sully left. Uh, mm-hmm. That was Four Walls. Which I, might be my favorite one. Like, I, it's very good. It's really good. It has a very different style um, than their first three. I think it's a little bit 
softer. It's not as like, because some of their, uh, in fitting with their like futuristic vibe, they have a lot of like EDM Mm -hmm. instrumentation in some of their other songs, which I don't always love. Right. Um, But it is very computerized and like techno-ish. Techno-y. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. And Four Walls is not, has a Yeah, it's got that sort of waterier like sound. Um, The last that we heard from FX, uh, they did, we'll talk about, I think we could talk about this like on another episode, but there's a, a concept of a project called SM Station where singles get released through again i think we could talk about it for a whole episode because a Mm -hmm. lot of interesting stuff has happened but fx did a song called all mine um for that and that music video always makes me feel really weird and sad because fx unfortunately like never really got the respect from sm i feel like uh, again like they were ahead of their time Mm -hmm. and i think the company didn't know what to do with them and they didn't they didn't get promoted as heavily as like Red Velvet or gr- like other girls group girl groups yeah, that have or come girls out of SM. generation or something like they just didn't get the it felt it always felt like the energy behind the promotion of FX was not a little the lackluster. Same. Like we said in a very early episode, they didn't get a fan club name until like Sol- as Sully had left or whatever. Like yeah. it took forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but the four, the All Mine, I love All Mine. I think it's like a really good song. But the music video makes me sad because it's like they're all filming themselves on like a phone and they're just singing and it's like a four way split screen, mm-hmm. but they're not together. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're, cause they're like forever separated. Um, because these days, Crystal is like doing so much acting. Luna and Amber are still putting music out. Mm-hmm. Um, they just recently put out a song together. Yes, they did called Lower, and mm-hmm. that's good. Um, and Amber, uh, this morning, Amber put out the first teaser for her next solo album. Mm-hmm. So, but Amber also being from California, she does spend a lot of time in LA. Mm-hmm. So I know that that and, and Victoria is like a fashion ambassador in China. So they they are usually separated by quite a bit of distance yeah um miss victoria very very much Mm -hmm. but uh as we brought up with exo before there's complicated stuff going on with china right now so chinese members of k-pop groups are uh at a bit of a like disadvantage as Mm -hmm. to being able to promote in korea so we haven't seen fx together in a long time and that's a bummer but i really love them they haven't officially disbanded no they are still officially a group, but, mm-hmm. um, you know. Maybe after all this sad stuff blows over, or if it ever does, then we'll maybe Victoria will be able to come back. That would be great, um, but I don't know. I also have I have a, I have the slightest of feelings that they're just kind of waiting for the contract to run out, but yeah. we'll see what happens. Okay, but to relive some joy, we're going to watch a K, uh, an FX video. Um, their most popular video is for their song Electric Shock, uh, which came out in 2012. Perhaps I don't know. You tell me. 2012 Electric Shock. Um, this video has been on one of my like all-time favorite K-pop video playlists, like forever and ever. When I was first like getting into K-pop, FX was like very high up on my list of like things that I loved. So I'm excited to watch this. So here comes FX Electric Shock. Electric. Oh, I love their dinosaur earrings. <gasps> Blonde Victoria. Oh. All Victorias are phenomenally beautiful Victorias. <laughs> That's true. So to describe, this is like a box video like Mm -hmm. we talked about. They are in various light-up boxes, a pink one and a white one. There's just like glowy stuff everywhere. Yeah, and it's really more focused on the dance itself. Their outfits are so crazy. Yeah, I think this was part of their like wildy futuristic like their Mm -hmm. clothes never match like luna has like a turquoise dress over like a very ugly red polka dot Mm -hmm. shirt like and none of it goes they (laughs) well they do i feel like color schemes they like agree to all have like black red blue white and maybe yellow (gasps) are there like backpacks tied to the front of amber wow (laughs) (laughs) see like they're wearing the same color green on the bottom yeah okay that's something. But they are very mismatched as far as like 
personalities, but I love their earrings. Like one of them's wearing banana earrings. Oh, Sully has those paddles that wake you up when <laughs> you're like dying on a table. That's scary. Oh, oh my God. Teasers. <laughs> she had like electric, one of those sticks. The electric shock part of this is very serious. <laughs> They're going to shock you. Oh, this was that fun time of K-pop videos where the genie ads at the bottom that look like an ad that yeah. you can dismiss, but they're part of the music video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a whole thing for like two years. It always stamps a specific time in K-pop if you see <laughs> one of those. <gasps> Eyeball bow. Like her bows have eyeballs in them. <laughs> laser, laser. One of my favorite English lines ever. <laughs> They all have very beautiful hair in this yeah. video. Like, really good hair on everybody. Yeah, I'm just watching them dance now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just watching them dance now. I know. The dance is so cute and like sassy. Electric shock. Yay! Wow. Electric shock. That was really fun. I love FX. Laser. Little laser. <laughs> <laughs> that always makes me laugh. Um Okay. So yeah, FX, FX, I really hope I hope we see more from you or I hope at least, you know, I all five of you happy. are making I hope you're all happy. Really, I do. Um, <laughs> okay. So that's it. Time for recommendations for this week. Um so as teased at the earlier in the episode, my recommendation this week is a GD and Top video and it's called Don't Go Home. And I love this video because uh, right now it's like the hot trend to, you know, recreate the 90s, like Bruno Mars and Cardi B in this new like EXID lady song. And everybody's like trying to like, you know, do the 90s BSS, thing again. BSS, just do it. Yes. But GD and Top already did this eight years ago because <laughs> they're always <laughs> ahead of everything. Um, the Another K-pop podcast uh the K-pop cast, uh, they do like this fun thing every Tuesday, this K-pop chat. You can do it on Twitter with us. Come join. And we just talk about stuff. And I brought up how much I'm like over the mullet thing already. And it seems to just be getting worse. And we were joking. A bunch of people were joking around. And I was like, oh, first idol to go full Joe Dirt gets like. Oh, my God. I saw this. And somebody <laughs> sent me a really old picture of G-Dragon with. A Joe Dirt yeah. like he's already done it. That's yep. the thing is like if something hasn't like you think something hasn't been done in K-pop, it's probably been done by a member of Big Bang already. I was already. just gonna say like if you think something hasn't been done, check with G Dragon first yeah. because like you think you've seen crazy hair, you haven't. You seen haven't shit. seen anything. Yeah, you haven't seen anything. Anything. <laughs> so don't go home. It's a fun song and it's a fun video. It like opens with like a parody of like the the Fresh Prince logo, mm -hmm. like but it says like G the GD and Top Show, but it look or no, it looks like the Cosby Show, I don't know. But it's like it's got that 90s vibe and they're just like in a on a really really fake looking street in like a convertible and they're trying to like impress a girl and like they're both acting very very ridiculous and it's just like colorful and happy and it makes me happy so go go check that out it's an oldie but a goodie and it's ahead of it was way ahead of its time don't go home GD and top awesome so a beautiful discovery i just made like today or last night i can't even remember um it's all of Seventeen on a show called Immortal Song, which I believe we've brought up before. Mm -hmm. It's a variety show where idols come on and they 
do a cover of like a classic Korean song. And the show, Immortal Song, did a, a tribute to Um Jung Wa, who Shannon recommended uh, the song ending credit like yeah, many forever episodes ago. ago. Um, she, I still recommend it. Yeah, it's a great, great <laughs> song. Um, she is, as Shannon uh, used the analogy of like the Kylie Minogue of Korea. Mm-hmm. Um, she still makes music today. She's like in her 40s. She's phenomenal. Um, so they did uh, the song, and I have to look it up. Hold on. Thank you. They did the song Tell Me, and it's really great. They do a fantastic job, and there's a part like halfway through where they mix in um, a song from her most recent album, which came out in 2017, um, and it cuts. Um Jung Wah is in the audience like as they're mm-hmm. t- p- performing it, and when they cut that, when they mix that in, the look on her face, like, it brought tears <laughs> into my eyes because she, the look on her face, she's like so honored and like yeah. impressed and surprised and I just like oh they're so good and DK has hits those notes and I just I'm here You're for you love. boys I'm here for you that's great um great Shannon got distracted because she started playing I the played music it. video. Oops. Or she started playing it's it. It's silent, but I'm like staring <laughs> but at it. But you're still Oops. captivated. Oops. Okay. It's got to stop that. We got to stop the episode and then we can watch it later. Um, because we are going to go prep light sticks Yay! after this. Uh, because uh, this I episode. My punch. This episode will be coming out just a few days before we finally get to attend this concert that we won't stop talking about. Beep, beep, beep. Um, and I have a whole bunch of glow sticks and I could have more, or you can claim some of the already bought glow sticks as your own. If you, uh, go donate to our fan project, gofundme.com slash AMA, K A M A K fan project. <laughs> um, if you haven't been listening to the last couple episodes, that's okay. But just to explain, um, we, okay. <laughs> we are going to a K-pop compilation concert a korean music festival that will have k-pop acts the k-pop acts will be rain b2b exid red velvet and nct 127 so we have purchased a whole mess of glow sticks in the fan colors for those groups Mm -hmm. um and we're just going to be passing them out for free at the door to spread k-pop love and joy at this concert so if you show the idols that like hey we have we're here and we see you and we're here and do you see us yeah, so if you if you like any of those groups or you just like K-pop in general and you want to like participate in a fan project, every literally every dollar counts because one dollar is three glow sticks. So like you know if you're like oh, I don't want it, like even a single dollar is like you, that means mm-hmm. you're participating and like it'll be exciting and we will make sure you're following us on all of our socials uh, because we'll definitely be posting pics and videos and stuff from this concert. Um, you can find us AMA K-pop pop. Uh, on Twitter and Instagram, amakpoppod.tumblr.com for all of our relevant links for every episode. And if you want to send us an email, amakpoppod at gmail.com. Yeah. And that's that. And that's that. Uh, so we will be back next week with an update from this concert for sure. Yeah. Um, so that'll be yeah. the first part of our episode. We haven't decided. What haven't the decided what to do be. yet, but you'll get to hear all about the concert and I'm sure it's going to be super fun. So we will see. And we'll do our best to also like, um, record and upload as much as oh, like, yeah. little pieces of the concert yeah, yeah, on yeah. like uh, Instagram and our, stuff. Our so. seats shouldn't suck too bad. So, uh, yeah, yeah. we'll try to. And I'm, I'm my real hope is that Cameras once, the, <laughs> once the sun goes down and since we're high up ish I would like to be able to see all of our glow sticks in the crowd yeah. that will be great okay so we'll see you then thanks guys talk to you later bye, bye. <laughs> Tonya and you're our inspiration bye